They just left him there, uncovered, lying in the middle of the street. No one went to check his pulse or to make sure he had a heartbeat. Blood slowly seeps out from underneath his body. Someone please tell me, is he breathing? The cautionary yellow tape has served as a blockade for us heart-stricken onlookers who take videos and snap pictures. The earth shatters from all the overwhelming cries, but my eyes never leave his body as he lay lifelessly about 6'3 and older than 16, rather skinny and wearing an oversized hoodie. I need to see his face as the paramedics race to the boy whose blood has now flooded like a river as they turn him over, placing him on the stretcher. I thought he was my brother. I'm the eldest of six children. Five girls and one boy, my baby brother, Papa. Well, that's what we call him, but his name is Jordan. He's very, very tall, handsome, loves to play basketball. Not the life of the party. Some would say socially awkward, but he's just quiet as you think of my brother. Like most young men, loves his Nintendo and PlayStation or practicing the newest wrestling moves on his two youngest nephews. He loves music to test school, has a sweet spirit and a kind heart, but unfortunately, he is a part of that statistic of growing up without a father present, no one to teach him how to tie a tie or what to do when there's a girl he likes, no one to prepare him for manhood or to inform him about the ways of this world, a world that will make sure he knows he is different. A world that will do everything it can to break his spirit. A world that will stereotype and demonize all the while making money off his God-given abilities. Keep his black history restricted to February in order to maintain this modern-day slavery. Come on. A world Come on. that will automatically see him as a threat because of the color of his skin or by how he dresses. God forbid he walks down the street in one of his favorite hoodies. I, oh. I tell Papa, you cannot be out late at night riding a bike or playing ball with your friends at that park you like. I try to warn him, but he doesn't understand. My brother, Jordan just turned 18. What a blessing. I say blessing because the world we live in, it is no longer common for a black boy to live that long. Not when you got cops killing young black men in their own backyard, Stephen Clark. Stephen Clark was a real wake up call. Because see, this shooting of an unarmed black man for holding a cell phone was way too close to home. Sacramento is where my papa lives. And all I kept thinking is, that could have been him shot dead. Or how about DJ Griffin down in Atlanta with an off duty officer emptied his gun into the body of that 18 year old teenager, same age as my brother. I'm scared for papa. He is a black boy who doesn't understand that they do not see him, they do not admire his potential, they do not respect his hustle, they have already labeled him a fuck, a menace to society, an animal who would need to be put down. That's how they will justify taking his life. His face will be broadcasted on every news station as a hard criminal, trouble gangster, all over social media, hashtags with filling up timelines and news feeds with headlines that another cop got all free. There is no justice for 14 year old Antonio. Shot dead for holding an airsoft toy. No justice for Jimmy Atchison killed in his apartment complex or the many, 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 many other black boys lying in graveyards. I am the big sister. I am his big sister. Someone tell me how do I protect my brother from a country who doesn't think his life matters? And yes, this is 2019, supposed to be a new year, a fresh start, but tell that to D'Angelo Brown, who was just shot in the head by a Chicago cop. Where's the New Year's resolution where America has vowed to protect the unarmed black man? So I ask again, how do I protect my brother from a world that's out to destroy him? How? Every time I go home to visit, I have this conversation with Papa. Again and again, showing him pictures and articles of young men slain who look just like him, hoping that one day it really sinks in, Jordan, that they do not see you as children, but just this black 
a waste of space and you're not safe. He's not safe. Y'all, I love my brother. He is the only boy of five sisters, the only one who can carry on the family name, lead a legacy that could impact history. But each day, I had fear for his life that they took my brother's life because they mistook his basketball for a knife. And I know it sounds ridiculous, but this is the world we live in. Yeah, that's right. Fun fact. Down in Florida, they use mug shots of black men as they're taught in practice. They are being trained and equipped to see black men and women as threats. We don't stand a chance. So what do I do? I continue to pray for you, Papa. I pray that God opens up the hearts of these cops who have been brainwashed, trained, raised to believe that every minority should become extinct. I give it over to you, God. And Papa, please remember that no matter what you do, any time you see blue, you put your head down, your hands up, and you live. Okay. Thank you.